All right, I'm going to share my screen and we are just going to dive right into um, our, hold on, if I can find it, um, our presentation. I've got a quick few little announcements to make. Um, we're not going to go through recognition or anything this morning because it's the first day of the month that we kind of did this the last couple of days. Um, so we are going to talk about, uh, I just want to congratulate Betsy and Lauren for locking in their success starters. Um, Betsy's in month one and Lauren's in month two. So congratulations, you guys. Um, keep pushing for that. That means you get a free ticket to go to Summit with us. I hope you guys took advantage of our Summit deal last month um, and registered for Summit, that $145 cost. Um, some things coming up this month. If you haven't heard, we've already been talking about it. $20 off all of our challenge packs and completion packs. Um, guys, this is unheard of. Uh, our when I purchased the all access challenge pack, it was $199 and it's $140 this month, which is insane. Um, if you've been talking to anybody ever, now is the time to follow up with them and explain that there's $20 off all of our packages this month. Um, we have also any package that ships is only $2 shipping, which is crazy. They're doing a holiday sale on shipping. It's only $2 per order. Um, our coach summit house is our houses. Um, we have plenty of room left. If you guys want to reserve a spot in that house, please just message me. It's only $50 to reserve your spot and that goes towards the 175 for the full weekend. Our challenge group this month, if you haven't seen these posts yet, these, this is our challenge group this month. Um, we're doing a fun little challenge. Everyone will be, Holly's going to break everybody up into groups of three on Sunday. So you will all have a group. Um, we're going to pair older people with newer people, meaning like veterans with new, new blood, um, and create little pods. And then we're going to, um, everyone in the group, so you guys understand what this is, everyone in the group is going to take a role. One person will be the caramel apple, one person will be the leaf, and one person will be the pumpkin. The leaf is going to be the team captain. So the team captain is going to um, post the points for the team each day in the group. Um, so how you choose who is who, the caramel apple, the person who's kind of the sweet one, the encourager one, the encourager on the team, um, they're responsible for sharing motivation to the group and within the full challenge group, um, posting some funny things, the wins and losses of the team, and they act kind of like the team cheerleader. The leaf is going to be like the team captain. They're going to encourage everyone to post their sweaty selfies, post their daily score, etc. cetera. Um, the pumpkin is going to be the one who cares most about the food the person who cares most about the food. Um, so they're gonna share recipes, they're gonna talk about meal plans, they're gonna encourage um, prep, it says picks, purchase prep tips, I think. Oh, picks, pictures, I put P-I-C-K-S. But pictures, prep pictures of their um, meal preps and food check-ins and such. Every single day, each person on the team can earn five points. They get their workout done, they drink their water, they drink their shake, they um, stick to their nutrition, and they have interaction in the group. Every day they rate themselves on a scale of one to five and they give it to their team captain. The team captain posts the totals in the group each week. At the end of the group, there will be the winning team gets a prize. We're giving Team Beachbody Apparel prizes. So um, there's also additional 100 points for uh, before and after pictures and an, e an additional point for every pound loss throughout the group. So that is what is going on for our challenge group this month. It should be super fun. I think that these little pods are going to really encourage the um, team community atmosphere and get everybody excited to um, stick it out through the holidays. Our new coach mentorship starts on Monday. If you have anyone to add to the new coach mentorship, please message me. Denise is going to be leading the new coach mentorship this month. Um, we're going to be passing the baton every single month. Fitness influencer, our um, fitness influencer group is going to start again the week after next. So not this coming Monday, but the week after, we'll do another three-day sneak peek into coaching. Um, so be adding your people to that now through next week. All righty. I'm going to stop sharing, and I'm going to pass the baton to my success partner, Rachel, who I absolutely love, and she's this tiny spitball of complete and total fire. Um, she is a mama. She has one little boy. and um, where are you guys ranked right now? I think you're beating us. 33. They're ranked 33 in the company right now. So, um, they beat us a little bit. We can come back, so watch yourself. Um, but she's going to talk to us a little bit about time management and how you can build this business in an hour or two a day. She is a former teacher. She got to quit her teaching job. Um, last year was her last year. So over the summer was her first like official 
non-teaching, but obviously she wouldn't be teaching anyway. So this, this semester is her first semester off of teaching, um, full-time coaching, and she is literally rocking this business. You are going to be blown away by her, so I'm going to give it to you. Sweet. Okay, guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I know some of you guys are like on your phones and I just see black and that's totally fine. But um, if I can see you, raise your hand if you are busy. Okay, if you're not raising your hand, you're a liar. We're all so busy, right? So it'd be so awesome to actually do what I feel like this business was created so that we can have a life of freedom and not have to work eight hours a day. Um, to be honest, this is the first time besides my workout, I don't consider workouts and personal development work. You won't hear me talk about that today. Um, I think that stuff would happen no matter what. Um, so I'm just going to concentrate on the work side, but this is the first time I'm sitting down to work today and, um, I'll probably only work for two to three hours today. And, um, I will, my average success club points is 50 plus. I recruit a lot of working coaches. My team is like Steph said, number 33. So they're working it. So I do, I mean, I'm all in, like I have an empire. And um, so I'm going to share with you my time management tips. And I have a presentation. I don't always for team calls, but time management, I feel like that would be ironic if I just like talked at you and I would just talk in circles and that would not be effective time management. So you'd be like, peace out. Um, okay. So sorry if I get like notifications and stuff, it just is going to happen. So anyways, a little bit about me, like why you should listen to me. So I, um, actually matched my teaching income about a year into my business. So I continued to teach by choice. I didn't, I had already matched it. Um, we were just like, we, I had gone into my marriage, like thinking we would always be penny pinchers. We would be living paycheck to paycheck and we would be basically broke because of, especially the community we live in is a little bit more expensive, like taxes and all that crap. So I just kind of went in knowing that. And then when I like basically doubled my teaching income is kind of how I looked at it. We were like cushy. So that was a really good feeling as a teacher and I love teaching. So I continued teaching um, by choice for three years and on Beachbody alone, I am a six figure a year earner with Beachbody um, and I met that milestone while I was working full time. So if you don't, if no one's ever broke that down for you, like um, that's making $2,000 a week, I did that while working full time. Um, I, I, not factoring in my teaching salary, which sucks and <clears throat> So I um, built an empire of a team um, in a business, my own business, while or working my business one to two hours a day because that's all I had. Um, we did lock in Elite this year um, uh, while I was working full time. Um, we went from a one star team to a five star team in just a couple of months. I have uh, eight of my girls have rank advanced to Diamond through internships and all that stuff. And I don't need to get into that, but I've done all this. Like we've moved twice, once with a baby. Um, I had a baby. I did 80 day obsession uh, while working full time, um, which is like, I feel like just crazy. Like, I, I don't know if I could ever go back to hour long workouts, especially after transform 20. And, um, and what, oh yeah, I nursed my son. I was getting up three, four times a night to nurse and I was still crushing my business all while working full time. So I want to teach you guys um, how to do that. So first thing, like time management is a skill. I want everyone to get that through their head. Like it's not something that some people have and some people don't. Some people are more naturally inclined to have certain skills. Um, but a skill is a skill and anybody can learn any skill. If I decided to be an awesome free throw shooter, I could do it if I practiced every day. It would be hilarious because, um, like Steph said, I'm so little, I'm like five foot flat. And so it would be hilarious. And I might have to work a little bit harder than like my husband, who's more athletic than me, but it's a skill. Like anybody can learn a skill. And just like we preach in like our boot camps and stuff, like meal prep skill. Like I didn't just wake up one day and I was like, I'm a boss in the kitchen. D -d 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 -d. Like, no, I had to practice for, you know, and it took me years. And if we're going in and out, 
with practice, it's going to take longer. So um, it's a skill and you just have to practice it. And at first it might feel like practicing time management might feel weird and uncomfortable. And I don't know that I was a boss at time management before, um, but I had to learn to be because to me, there was no um, like other option. It was either like quit or be a boss at time management and like figure it out. And I wasn't going to quit because I wanted to prove everybody wrong. So um, I just figured it out. So first thing I want to start with is multitasking out is horrible. We want to, we no more multitask. Like multitasking in our society is like put up on this pedestal, like you must be a badass if you can multitask. No. Research has shown that multitasking is, is you will actually perform worse at all of your tasks than if you were to just do one at a time. And um, it's, a, it's actually a huge waste of time to multitask. So I always give this analogy. Um, I'm assuming most of you guys are moms on here. If you guys have ever, like, you don't have to be a mom to relate to this, though. Um, have ever cleaned your house? I remember, like, uh, getting ready for my son's first birthday, and my house was trashed, and I was, like, so stressed. Like, my anxiety was at, like, a 10, and I was, like, looking around, I'm like, oh, my God, I have to get started cleaning. So I, like, start cleaning off the island because your stuff is going to go, and I'm like, oh, my God, I have to run the dishwasher. So I, like, stop cleaning the island, like, get the dishwasher packed, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I look on the floor, there's dog hair everywhere. I'm like, I need a vacuum, and then, of course, like, all moms do this. I'm like, of course, I need all the laundry done before people come over today because they'll definitely be upstairs and see full laundry baskets, so I have to start laundry, and then I'm like, oh my gosh, Leo's toys are everywhere, and if this can go on forever, right? Like, who's ever done that? Um, and if you look around, like, you're exhausted, in 30 minutes and if you look around you've done nothing like you have nothing accomplished besides like all of these little started tasks but nothing is accomplished like your to-do list still sucks and you like you can't cross anything off your list yet our business is the same way <clears throat> if you're starting and stopping tasks and like jumping all over the place based on like what you think you should be doing and oh I just got a message and I should respond to her and oh I should post in my challenge group oh I should start doing invites oh it got distracted without those messages coming in again you are going to be physically exhausted and you're gonna have nothing to show for it in your business so we're gonna shut down the multitasking and instead you're gonna do tasks start to finish one chunk at a time. And when I was working full time, I had to work in pockets of time um, because that just was my life. Um, I don't prefer to work that way now, um, but you just have to figure out what works for you. This is just an example, like spending 15 minutes doing invites, start to finish. Like you're doing nothing else except, this is a copy paste message, guys. Like just send, spewing them out and seeing how many you can get out in 15 minutes. Now, because I like, you know, kind of crush time management, um, I can get out like almost a hundred invites in 15 minutes because I know who I'm looking for. I know what I want to say. Inviting is very casual to me now. Um, I've practiced, but at first, no, I probably got out like five in my first 15 minute chunk, but we all start somewhere and you have to build. Um, and I do the same thing with new messages, people who are liking um, my posts, my new followers, um, that sort of thing. Again, copy paste message, you're spewing them out and getting them out as fast as you can. Have you noticed that what's not on this list is answering messages? It's not on this list, you won't see it. Um, I'll get to that shortly. And follow-ups. Um, these take me a little bit longer. I don't do these every day anymore. I have it like I do bulk work now. Um, but when I was working full time, it was just easier for me to do a little bit every single day um, and just be consistent AF in my business. And um, it paid off. Just make sure you're using a tracking system so you're not like, oh, yeah, I should follow up with Betsy, who I talked to six months ago. And Chelsea, I talked to yesterday. And you have a system in place. That's a different training for a different day. Now I'm going to give you some super specific tangible tips that you can write down and put into effect right now 
to stop the burnout, like the physical exhaustion and not having anything to show for it in your business and get you to your goals like ASAP, especially with the no excuses November, bringing nuts. Okay, number one, this is the biggest waste of time I see coaches um, spending their time on is following coaches and watching other coaches' stories. No, that is a huge, absolute waste of time, period. It's a waste of time. Um, seeing what other coaches are doing in their day-to-day -day is not moving your business forward. And people always say like, no, 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 I'm drawing inspiration. I'm going to call bullshit on that. Um, I realized pretty early on that I kind of had a different mindset about that. Like my first summit, people were like, oh my gosh, do you see so-and-so? I was like, who's that? They're like, oh my God, they're like a top 10 coach or whatever. I was like, I didn't even know what top 10 meant. Um, and they're like, you need to follow her. And I was like, why? <laughs> like, I just didn't get it. Um, and I'm not saying you should unfollow every coach. I think you should follow your upline um, and you should follow your success partner, somebody you're not competitive with. But it's a huge time suck because one, coaches are on stories like all day, every day, and if you're not, you should be. Um, and they're interesting, like we think each other are interesting. So, and it's it's so like tempting when you log into Instagram and see your favorite people's little bubbles at the top to go and click it instead of going to where you're supposed to go to get your work done. And, and it's so easy to spend 15 minutes watching people's stories when you could have sent out 60 invites um, and moved your business forward. Seeing how, like I said, seeing how other coaches spend their day is not moving your business forward. And it's the comparing game for women is so strong. So let's do ourselves a favor and cut that off. And whether you mean to or not, you will start comparing. I, my heart breaks when new coaches start following me and they tell me they're a new coach and they're following me for inspiration. And I don't say this because I don't want to hurt their feelings and like, be a bitch. I don't want to. Um, but they're like, I'm just following you for inspiration. And I want to say they don't because you're not going to find my journey inspiring. Eventually you're going to become like some people it pushes, but most people you're going to start comparing. I fall into this too with my friends in the business. Um, I'm like, shit, they, they rank advanced four people today. And I only rank advanced two. You hear the problem with that? And to be honest, I don't even have any rank advancements today. So when I see other people's, I'm going to get jealous instead of just pouring into my own team. So I don't even watch other coaches' stories on Thursdays um, because that doesn't serve my business and it's not fair to my team. So don't worry. I use this as a reward system for myself at the end of the day when I got all my work done. I can use the search bar in Instagram and search my favorite coaches and watch their stories and peek on their feed. But don't be tempted. You following them does not serve your business. So you don't need to follow me after this presentation. If you do, my VA will totally send you a new message. Um, and that's okay. I won't yell at you, but I'm just saying you shouldn't. You don't need to follow their coaches because the fastest way to kill something special is to compare it to something else. And your coach journey is so special. I don't want to squash that. It's not fair. Um, number two, this is like my biggest thing ever that I preach, preach, preach to my team is stop answering messages on the fly. We've all done it. I've done it. It's exciting to have a prospect of a new sale of a sale. Excuse me, but it is not sexy. Um, at all, period. I don't have notifications on, on my phone. I do not know when I get a new message because um, I'm going to drop some major truth bombs. I hope tough love's okay. That's like my favorite thing to pass on to other people. Um, but it actually makes you look salesy and desperate for the sale. Like by like, oh my gosh, she's ready to buy. Like, let me send her the next part. Like, let me send her sign up options. Like it looks like you're it, it can be confused. Excitement can be confused for desperation. And you, you might be like, well, I am desperate for, I want the, I want the successful points. I want the sale. Maybe this is your first person. Maybe you need one more person to rank advance. No, you are not desperate. 
enough for any person. If there's somebody who needs to sign up right then, they'll quit, they'll quit anyways. So no, you have to honor your business hours and you have to honor your time management and you're not answering messages until you're sitting down to answer messages um, when everything else is done. I'll talk about that in a second. Because it, it doesn't put stock in your business if you're always on your phone. Um, it's not fair to your family. It's not fair to you. It's not fair to your prospect because you'll be half in in all parts of your life and everyone will suffer, especially you. Um, and to be honest, no one will want to join your team because especially if they're a prospect, you're answering their questions all the time, constantly as they come in. And then you're like, Hey, have you ever thought about being a coach? They're going to be like, hell to the no, like pass. And you're like, why? And you're like, I don't, they're like, I don't want to be on my phone all the time. And if you're like, you don't have to be, they're going to think you're a big liar because you're on your phone all the time answering their questions and being at their back and call. They're like, Hey, thanks for giving me VIP treatment. I didn't deserve it, but, um, I don't want to do that. I want a life of freedom. So abide by that. And to be honest, I, I almost struggle to get like things on my Instagram story of my kit of my kiddo. Um, because my phone is away and I'm not messing around on my phone when I'm spending, um, quality time with him. And that, this is like, this is hard. This is a mindset shift, but I promise you will see more, um, results in your business if you put stock in your business and don't answer messages on the fly. I'm like really passionate about that. Okay, number three is just to do your crap. Don't be distracted by the time wasters. So the crap that needs to get done first needs to get done first. So think about what is going to move your business forward, your IPAs, your income producing activities, your invites, follow-ups, messaging new likes and followers, like those new connects, and then last is responding to messages. Because if you start with that, it's a rabbit hole and you'll never get out. Because what happens when you respond back to people? They respond back to you. And even if not everybody does, some of them will. And if you keep responding, like it's, it's a rabbit hole. You'll never get out and you'll waste a ton of time. Um, it's okay for people to wait for a message from you. They will live, I promise. Um, then you can do the other stuff if you have time. So when I was working full time, sometimes I didn't get to check into my team page every day and they all lived. Um, and I don't have a direct upline that, um, that works. So I didn't need to check into another team page, but, um, I wasn't doing extra trainings. I was just, you know, nose to the grind, blinders on, doing these income producing activities, not these, I call them NIPAs, non income producing activities. They're things that you can do if you have time. If I don't check into my challenge group every single day, they, oops, sorry, I don't, it does this sometimes. Um, they will live, they already have all the tools. Like, does everybody agree? Like the workouts are proven to work. The nutrition plans, no guesswork. Like fixate, like they're good. And they have each other in there. If I post in there, it's like gravy. And um, so it's, it's okay. And then this should really be last is watching other people's stories because that doesn't serve your business in any way, shape, or form. And then stop doing the crap that doesn't matter. Stop looking for the shiny training and like diving into every single training you're hearing about that's promising like magical unicorns and rainbows and all that shit. It does not exist. I'm here to tell you every single top coach, every coach you want to define as successful, they will all just tell you they found success by doing those income producing activities every single day and maybe 10 xing that stuff. But they're, they weren't 10 xing like watching other people's stories and they weren't 10 xing like uh, posting in their challenge groups and stuff. They were 10 xing the vital behaviors, inviting new connects, follow-ups, follow um, that sort of thing. And if I'm not crapping on trainings in general, like absolutely team calls are a must, um, but you should make sure you get your other stuff done today. <coughs> And if you're going to do a training, do one and go all in on that training. My extra fun or my fun tips um, is to create the joy in things that don't bring you joy because it is a business. It's unrealistic to think 
every single thing is going to be like, yay, I love every single thing about this business. Like it's normal to not love every single part. Um, you're human, you're allowed to like, for example, I don't love sending um, messages to my new followers. So I outsource it. My, my virtual assistant does that for me um, because it needs to get done. I just don't really want to do it. And I outsource growing my Instagram because I know how to do it, but it does not bring me joy. So I'm happy to outsource it um, because your time is worth something. Um, so, but things you are doing, set a timer, make it a game, see how many invites you can do in 10 minutes. And then tomorrow do the same thing and beat your score and do that again the next day and the next day and the next day for the rest of time. Um, and then I like to do like mindless activities while I'm multitasking. So I would say like my husband and I love like MTV crap shows and we love Bravo. Okay. That's like prime time for me to like edit photos and stuff like that. Or like scroll in my challenge groups and comment on stuff. It doesn't need my undivided attention like messaging does and like invites do. And if I want it, the biggest bang for my buck, like editing photos, I could like pretty much do that in my sleep. So I can do that while I'm, um, and I just communicate that with my husband, like, oops, like, Hey, I'm going to, um, do a couple things on my phone while we're watching this and then set up some things that work for you while you sleep is like the saying. And these are some things that take some extra time, um, but they're worth it and they will pay off. Um, so get your stuff in order, like make sure on your Instagram profile, you have a place to collect like a landing page for boot camps and for joining your team on Facebook. Use the linked groups. If you're running a sneak peek, link it in your challenge group and tell them what it's about. You never know when um, Kelly is going to see it and doesn't need to message you then. Um, she's like, oh, I've kind of been thinking about coaching. I'll just click on that and join her group. Maybe you're physically sleeping. That's where that comes from. And have, you can have info on your profile picture and your cover photo. Like if people were to click it, um, provide those landing pages there too. So they know what you're about. This is my favorite is just get efficient AF. And these are my little hacks to save you time. So number one is if you're not using conversation guides slash scripts, whatever you want to call them, you're missing out. Um, my challenge groups, my boot camps, whatever you want to call it, the way they run doesn't change. So the way I talk, Shakeology formula isn't changing. So the way I talk about it does not need to change. Copy, paste, move on. I actually don't copy, paste. Um, in Instagram now, they have uh, quick keys um, within Instagram, but I, I have this set up just on my iPhone. And here are the directions on how to do it if you want to screenshot this. Um, I've been doing this for like the last six months and it is such a time saver to not have to go back and forth into a different app to co highlight, copy, oh shit, wrong chunk, click paste. And in Instagram, your chunks have to be smaller. So quick keys is a lifesaver. Um, if you don't know how to set this up and then I do this on Facebook messenger too, especially if you work on your phone, you need to have, um, quick keys set up. And my team nicknamed this donut texting because in theory, if you were to write donut and it, it would populate in a second. So, um, like at the end I say like, we have a bunch of options for sign up packages. My favorite is X, Y, Z because da, 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 check these out. Let me know which one looks best for you and your goals and we'll get you signed up. So all I had to physically type was donut and all of that, that I just spewed out to you populated in one second less than a second. Um, and that's what quick keys is, but name it, don't name it things that you text often. So like I say, like pack one or shake a one, um, so that it doesn't populate all the time. It's just annoying if it does. So that's how you set that up and then create a schedule based on your life and stick to it. I absolutely schedule in family time. I schedule in my workouts. When I was working, I scheduled work. I worked on my lunch hour. Like I had goals. Like I don't like when people say like, I'm not willing to like, I don't want to work on my lunch hour. Like, okay. But for me, it was not an hour. It was 20 minutes. Um, 20 minutes. I can get so much done in 20 minutes. And sure, it's great to like sit and socialize, but I wanted out of, you know, I had, I had to hit a income goal to 
to appease my husband to stay home. Okay, well that 20 minutes, like no, I'm unapologetically working my business and alone in my classroom, I'd lock the door um, and just go hard for 20 minutes. Um, and then obviously you have to be doing your vitals. You have no business doing this business if you aren't doing your own work on yourself. Like get that transformation, share about your Shakeology, share about your Energize, all that stuff. Um, and I think we have a couple minutes for some questions. I love questions. I mean, sure, I try to go fast, actually on purpose, so that. Um, so you have time for other crap because time. Yeah, yeah. right. Well, and to answer you guys' questions. I loved that, Rachel. Rachel, that was incredible. Um, do we have some questions? I know a lot of the girls are at work right now, so it's going to be kind of hard. That's okay. Um, we'll see if some people pop in. I'll give them a couple minutes to jump into the chat box and type in a question or just send smoke signals and you can unmute yourself. Um, but I really, really, really love a few things that like even personally that I took away from that is that like communicating with your spouse saying like, Hey, I'm just going to be on my phone a little bit while we watch this. Like I'm still here. Like <laughs> I think that that really, really probably makes your relationship a lot easier with this business mm -hmm. and his support with this business. Um, so that was really cool. I also loved your, um, your breakdown of what exactly you do and like your minutes and that it's all copy paste because that's my life. That's my jam. Um, I, I mean, I love the way you work. You know that. Thank you. Um, anybody have questions? Do you have questions for Rachel outside of what she said? Any questions for her? What is your rank in the, or what, where are you at? Like rank wise in the company right now? Not number. But um, so I'm five star in my first business center and two star in my second business center. Did you open your third? Yeah. Yeah. Good job. That's exciting. I haven't had that happen yet. It's pretty great. I needed that yeah. to happen. That's income. That's income. Yes, guys. That is income. And to be honest, you guys, like I hit like two thousand dollars a week. Um, myself like before I had actual working like for real working coaches because of my second business center so like two star ASAP has to be your goal if you want to make money and the way that we connected Rachel and I connected guys just so you guys know how we connected I saw her on Instagram she just happened to be a, she's a c-section mama like we were like uh, we kind of have same similar hashtags so I found her searching for my people and I found her um, which like made me look at her profile and waste a lot of time, but I knew that we were very similar in where we were with our businesses and where the, like, and our trajectory of where we wanted to go with our businesses. So I sent her a message and now we're like success partners. And I like to like learn from her. She gives us so much value that you don't even know is coming from her sometimes. And I'm pretty sure I try to give some back, but, um, Always. oh my gosh, she gives so much. If you guys ever find that person that you see like, oh my gosh, we're at similar places, message those people because they will add value back into your business. Like this call was invaluable. Our team is going to take so much from this. Anybody want to like just share their biggest takeaway and we can maybe start questions from there. Jen, I'm calling you out because you have a baby. Hello. Hey, hey, Jen is a newer coach on our team, and this is her little nugget. Hi. Two months old. <laughs> what were your biggest takeaways from this call as a newer coach? Honestly, it like, it really hit home because I was thinking today about all the messages that I've gotten, and I'm like, well, how do they have time to just send all of these messages? And I started copy and pasting things, but I was still going through and editing everything so that it fit that person. But I still feel like that was like taking away too much time. So that's really awesome that she brought that up because now I know I don't necessarily have to do that. I can just alter my message a little bit. Totally. And remember that when people are following you and that's why I like connect off of people who are liking my posts and watching my stories and stuff, they already know you. So I don't spend a lot of time forming um, or like getting to know them because it feels awkward for them um, because they already know me. So they kind of like, even subconsciously they're like, 
why am I answering these questions? Like I, they know everything about me. They know I live in Michigan. They know I have a kiddo. They know my husband and I are going to start trying soon for another baby. Like there is nothing that I don't talk about on my social media already. So it's weird if I'm like asking them questions and getting to know them, like they feel weird about that. You know what I mean? Not, yeah. not that they're creeped out or anything, but they already feel like we're friends. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. Like, like they know that I'm remodeling my kitchen. Like everybody, so it's weird if I'm like, oh, where do you live? I don't have anything get to give back because they already know. So I just like cut to the chase and then I get to know them in my, either on my team or in my challenge groups. And that has worked immensely well for me. I'm a super awkward person, so I don't need help in the awkward department making things more awkward. So I don't, I do not form. I'm just like, either you're in or you're out. I'll love on you until you're in. That's, that's fine. But I don't spend time like how many dogs do you have? Like that sort of stuff. Yeah. So I'm sure the question going through everybody's head is like, well, what do you send them? And guys, you already send them what she sends them because she gave us her scripts a long time ago. So that message that's like, are you interested in what we do? Or are you just being a cheerleader too? Those are Rachel's scripts. These yeah. are the who I got those scripts from. So, um, that's still what you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's super informal, super hands off and just kind of gives people the op opportunity to say yes or no. And then you go from there. But the conversation isn't over when they right. say, I'm just a cheerleader. Cool. Do you work out too? You continue exactly. the conversation. Exactly. Awesome. Anybody else have any questions? If not, we'll jump off. If you do have questions, you can post them in our event page on our Facebook group, um, and I will relay them to Rachel. Sound good? I'm an open book, so any questions? Oh, Denise has a question. Go ahead, girl. Okay, so one of the things I've been doing lately is sending a lot of those copy-paste messages, and <clears throat> I... Um, I'm doing pretty well, okay, with getting some responses, but I see a lot of people just completely, like I can see that they read them, but then they never reply. Yeah, that's how, normal. What's your percentage on that? <laughs> and, and then how, how do you kind of break past that, like the next time you want to message them, or do you not go back right away? Um, <laughs> no, it's, it's a lot of people that ignore it, and that's fine. I, I just don't care anymore. Um, I don't investigate. I don't spend any sort of time investigating things that are going to bring me down. Does that make sense? Like I don't ever look back and see how many messages I sent and how many people responded. Like I'm just always moving forward. And then yes, I absolutely message them again. I just kind of change up my invite. Um, like past, I call it my cheerleader message. So I might do something like on Mondays, like Oh my gosh, I just took my progress photos. I'm having all the feels. So I opened up enrollment for my virtual gym again. Do you want to snag a spot? And even if they saw the last message and didn't respond, if they're still liking my stuff, then they're a fan and they're thinking about it. So it's my job to keep putting it in front of them. Um, a lot of times people don't, you know, like they'll just, they just forget. Like they don't have Beachbody on the brain all the time because they're not a Beachbody coach. Even if they're like, oh, I really would like to lose 10 pounds. They don't necessarily always think of that message they got two months ago. So and also, timing is huge. Money mm -hmm. is huge. They may have just gotten paid or a bonus or what a gift card or whatever. So timing is always huge too. So yes, keep inviting. And you never know when that timing is going to be like, ding, that's it. So I just honestly don't overthink it. Um, this is like my favorite thing to say, uh, and I hope you guys take this the right way. So uh, like this business is so simple. A monkey could do this business, but a monkey could probably do it better because they wouldn't get their feelings hurt. We are so feelings invested and Please trust me, I was the most sensitive person three years ago when I start, started my business. I would cry if, you know, like I knew how many people were ignoring me and I knew all of that stuff until I realized one, okay, sensitive Sally, go away. Like that's not an attractive quality about myself. And now I'm like a much more confident person 
and that stuff doesn't bother me anymore because I made a decision to not let it bother me and to pour into the positivity instead of letting that stuff bring me down. Like it's a business that stuff happens to everybody. Like Ashley Molstead, number one coach, I guarantee people ignore her messages. Like because she's a human, like other, other humans do. And that's just what happens. Like I've, I would fall over in this chair if she said every single person she messages messages her back. Just also because she's connecting with people she doesn't know. They don't know that she's a top coach in the business. Right. Maybe they care. They don't right. care that you signed last week. They know you. They see you, your journey. You're not selling a product. You're selling yourself. So you need Correct. to remember that. You need to be, remember, why would someone sign up with you? That's what you need to always be putting out there. Your, your sharing should be like that. Your story should be like that. Your messaging should be like that. You're a top coach. Why? Figure that out and then share about it. But guys, I do need to cut this I off. I have been getting. Sorry. Oh. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I have been getting some people who say, just keep bothering me. You're not bothering me. Like, just keep nudging me. Some, at some point, I will. So I'm like, okay, I will. And that's fine. Um, and then I had one I posted with the group the other day that, I had been talking to this girl for months and she kept putting me off and now she's like the biggest cheerleader in my challenge group because she's so excited. She lost five pounds already. So, I mean, I have people that are talking to me that I started talking to two and a half years ago. Like, so yeah, you, you never know when it's going to happen. You never stop inviting. They can ghost you 50 times and all of a sudden they're like, Hey, I'm ready. And you're like, mm -hmm. where have you been for six months? But like, yeah. it's what happens. <laughs> But I love you guys. I got to run. Kids are at school and they need to be picked up in 15 minutes. So I have to go get the kids. Um, I will post this in our team page. Thank you so much, Rachel, for jumping on with us. We appreciate your time. Um, and I will talk to you guys all soon. Bye. All right, bye, guys.